Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. And may you never hunger or thirst throughout this journey and through the barren land until we reach heaven, our heavenly home with him. Amen. Today we do begin a sermon series talking about the I am statements of Christ. In John's gospel, he has seven I am statements that he records Christ saying. Now in those I am statements, each one reveals a little something about who Christ is about his nature, about him as God among his people. But even more than his nature, in that statement, I am, it reveals that it is indeed God among us. See, going back historically, we know that the word used was ago me. And when Jesus said that ago me, he was echoing something that the people had heard time and time again. See, even though the Old Testament was originally written in the Hebrew language, about the second or third century before Christ, it was translated. And they translated it into, great, into Greek. And this was called the Septuagint. And in the Septuagint, whenever they used the divine name of the Lord, Yahweh, they translated it as that word, those two words, ego eimi. When you hear Moses ask the Lord, what are you to be called? And the Lord answers him, I am who I am. This is our, what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. That statement, I am, that, that statement is so sacred that the Jewish people would not even have written it, much less said it, for fear of blaspheming the name of the Lord. They were afraid to say that name, Yahweh. And here, Jesus said, Ego e me, I am. I, it will be. I have been, and I ever will be, for you. See, in those statements, those I am statements, it was not just about the nature of who Christ was, but it is the nature of God with his people. It is the I am who took on human flesh and came and dwelt among us. It is the I am, Jesus Christ, who, although true man, was also true God. And so as we begin this series talking about the great I am, we're reminded that Jesus was more than a man, that he was true God and true man, that he, as the I am, was carrying out the will of the Father on earth. And so the first I am statement we're given is I am the bread of life. Now as Lutherans, we may have a tendency to immediately fast forward and jump right to communion. Because we hear that, I am the bread of life, and how can we not think about the Lord's Supper, where Jesus says, this is my body given for you, this is my blood shed for you in bread and wine. But let's slow down just a minute. Let's back up the train before we get right there, because we are going there, but let's back up just a minute first. In the context, as you heard me say to the kids, Jesus said this right after the feeding of the 5,000. The people had received that gift of God's bread. Again, a gift from heaven that had fed them and nourished them, had strengthened them. And here, Jesus says, I am the bread. The strength, the nourishment that we need. Jesus as the bread of life is one whom we can trust, one who can be assured of. But sometimes I think we struggle with that, that trust and that assurance. Sometimes I think we struggle with who, what it means for him to be, uh, to be the bread of life in our life. There is a, there's a water pump somewhere between here and Blythe, out in the middle of the desert. It's off the beaten path, and so imagine that as you are going north from Glamis, you're walking through the desert. You don't have your quad. You don't have your cell phone. You don't have a mule. It's just yourself, your shoes, your clothes, and an empty canteen of water. And you stumble upon this water pump just in the middle of the desert. 115 degrees, you pretty thirsty. And you look at the pump, and there's a sign, a note that had been written, hands, handwritten from a previous traveler, that says, buried in front of the pump, is a bottle of water. Use this bottle of water to prime the pump, but don't drink it. 
pour the water into the pump. Halfway. Let it get primed a little bit. Pour it the rest of the way. And then the pump will pump water more than you need. Well, what do you do? If you came across that pump, that thirst that you had, do you trust and believe that if you dump the water, that water will come? Or do you drink that bottle of water and refresh yourself? What do you do? What would you do if you were faced with that situation? Would you have faith not only for yourself, but for the next traveler? I think this kind of reminds us of where our gospel takes us today. Because is it about what we do, or is it about what God has done? Knowing that Jesus is the bread of life, does it, is it about us providing for our needs, or is it about how God provides for all of our needs? See, I think in the world we live in today, we, we struggle with this question, and we want there to be something we can do. We want to drink that whole bottle of water because we don't want to take a chance. We don't want to step out in faith just a little bit. But who can blame us? We live in a world that is full of sin, death, full of corruption, full of people who take advantage of us. We live in a world that, well, we know is not perfect. We live in a world where Friends and neighbors have had their homes repossessed. We live in a, neighbor, in a world where we know that our children and our grandchildren have been laid off from their jobs without much chance of ever getting their jobs back. We live in a world where we've had to tighten our own belts a little bit with rising gas prices, rising grocery prices, rising cost of living in general. And even the small hope that we have, we write off. Convincing ourselves, well, it's with job growth. Well, we live in the Imperial Valley, so it's not going to get here for a long time anyway. And so we look, at our, look around. We wonder if there's something we have to do. We wonder if there's something that we have to step out and maybe help God just a little bit. For isn't there that old phrase, God helps those who help themselves? Don't we look to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where, Jesus, where, where Paul writes to the Thessalonians, He who does not work shall not eat. Have, anybody, have, have any of you ever looked at those verses and wondered if that wasn't a reference to you? That you have to do something. That there's some way that you have to contribute. It's easy to get, to get, to get, that, uh, get that mindset when you live in the world we do. It's easy to get convinced of that when you see so many people struggling, even if you yourself are not struggling. It's easy to try, fall into that mindset when you hunger and you thirst and you feel that as you go through this desert land, you are still parched still waiting that God will fill you up and make you full. Hebrews 11, chapter 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? It's an interesting thing because it isn't based in our obedience. It isn't based in what we do. It isn't based on how hard we try or our good intentions. But faith is based ultimately in trust, isn't it? Our faith is bound in our trust in God, in our hope, in His promises. As we go through this barren land, as we go through this desert land, what will you do? What will you do? Will you trust or will you take that bottle of water and suck it down for a temporary fix? So often in this world, it's easier to do that, isn't it? To take the shortcut, to take the easy path, to take the quick fix. And there's a lot of quick fixes out there, out there aren't there? Think about your own lives. Think about the ways that you have tried the quick fix. Has it ever worked out for you? 
Maybe sometimes it's in the beginning it does. But ultimately, when we trust in anything but the Lord, it's bound to fail. And we've seen this time and time again. We've seen it time and time again in our own lives and in the lives of people around us. We see this in the people who are hurting on the streets around us. We see this in the people who are hurting in our communities and around the world. That there is no hope except hope in the Lord. There is no comfort and strength except for in the bread of life. As we go through this barren land, through this desert, we see that that we need the bread of life. We see that even amidst the difficulties that we need Christ Jesus. Because there is no other hope under heaven except Christ. There is no other strength and there is no other support. We confess this faith even as we say the, the, the Nicene Creed. Even as we confess it, in the, we say that we believe that God provides for us, that He sustains us just in the statement I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. But sometimes I think those words are empty. Sometimes I think those words are rooted in a lack of trust, not only in our physical lives, but sadly in our spiritual lives too. Because isn't that what distrust breeds? More distrust. Until we start to wonder, well, if there's something I have to do in this physical life, Perhaps there's something I have to do in my spiritual life as well. And we start to ask those questions and we start to wrestle with those. And we even start to grumble maybe a little bit. Like the Israelites did. Did you notice how our Old Testament text started for today? Exodus chapter 16 verse 2. The whole company of the Israelites, they grumbled against Moses and Aaron. They grumbled against God. And how often does our grumbling against God reveal our distrust? God, why don't I have the new car? Why, isn't, why aren't I, my bills paid? Why don't I have a little extra to lend to a friend in need? You know, that's why it's so important that the bread of life is not wrapped up in us. Because if it was, it would crumble and fade away to dust. But why the bread of life had to be Christ's true God who came and dwelt among us. Why the bread of life had to be that sustenance of the Father sending His Son into the world. That is why the bread of life had to be the one who went to the cross for each one of us to pay the price. To pay the cost for our sins. Because there was nothing we could do. There was no hope that we had. We are people who are sinners. We are people who have broken God's law. And we are people who need His forgiveness. And it is only through the bread of life, Christ Jesus going to the cross, that our sins could be paid. It is only through His precious sacrifice of His body and blood that we could find salvation. It is only in that bread of life that we can know with full assurance that not only is all paid for before our Father in heaven, but that He continues to sustain us each day. Because it is true that our lives on this earth are difficult. It is true that our lives on this earth will run into trouble and will not always be exactly what we expect. But our Lord promises that He will provide for us. He promises that He will give us what we need. It may not be an extra dollar every now, it may, and it may not be more food than we know what to do with. Sometimes it may be the prayer support of a friend in the congregation. Sometimes it may be someone taking you out to lunch when you're hungry. Sometimes it may be an encouraging word. But our Lord promises to provide us what we need. What we need to support this, day, this life day in and day out. But even more than that, He provides for us with such generosity that we have more than we need. He provides for us with more than we could ever want, in fact. And He provides for us in ways that we don't always even know. Isn't that what faith is though? That we don't always see how God works. That we don't always know exactly what His hand, how His hand is working in our lives. But isn't it amazing when you look back and when you see how God has provided. 
how you've gone through a difficult time, because I'm sure each of you have gone through a difficult time, or you may even be going through one now. And you can see, though, how God is working. You can see the way in which He has led you in the past and how He's leading you now. He promises to provide for all that we need. And even more than that, every week we do. We do come before Him as those poor, miserable sinners. Those sinners who have broken His law. And we come and we kneel at His altar. We crumble before Him and receive that gift of His own lifeblood. His own body. He invites us to receive that gift of His forgiveness. Not only that though, but the strengthening of our faith. The healing of our hearts. He invites us to commune with Him. And to receive His love and His mercy. And it is a foretaste of the feast that is to come. Because although the Israelites said, manna, what is this? And didn't know exactly what it was they were receiving. Our God has shown us that the bread of life is His Son, Jesus. Our bread of life is the salvation we receive. And it is the promise that we will one day join with Him. Not in only here on earth at the banquet of the Lord's Supper, but in His banquet feast in heaven. Where we will join with Him and drink, rich, drink richly of His mercy and eat and be filled with His love. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to Me will never be hungry. He who believes in Me shall never thirst. May we never hunger or thirst, knowing Jesus is our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Jesus, You have said that You are the bread of life. And we pray that You would be with us this day and each day. That You would sustain us. That as we go through this barren land, through this desert of life, that You would carry us. Lord, I know that, that some of us are going through difficult times. That some of us have been through difficult times and that, you have, that, that there are some difficult times ahead for some of us. And we ask, Lord, that You would sustain us now as much as You have in the past. That You would carry us through and that You would give us strength of heart to know Your presence. Lord, may You give us full assurance that we will never hunger or thirst for Your righteousness because You have provided it for us. That, we, that there is nothing we can do for You have filled us up and made us full. And we pray again today, Lord, that by Your Holy Word, You would fill us up. You would make us full. That You would give us the strength and nourishment we need to face each day, trusting in You and having the hope that one day we will join You forever and eternity. And so it is in Your name, O Christ, we pray. Amen.